So I have an important update in the current lawsuits against the ATF and their pistol brace rule, including the nationwide injunction that's currently in place. So let's talk about what is now happening with pistol braces. Now, before we jump into this video, I want to thank one of the new sponsors of the channel, which is Patriot Mobile. For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only company in America, the only wireless provider that has Christian conservative values. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks. That means that the same coverage you would get from those companies is the exact same that you would get from Patriot Mobile. And you can also then support a company that has the same values as you, which is pro freedom of speech, pro 2A, and pro freedom. I first met Patriot Mobile over at SHOT Show. I met their whole marketing team. I got to have conversations with them and they seemed like a really cool company. And they were actually sponsoring you know, SHOT Show, which is a big deal. And also they are 100% based in the US, which means that if you need to call customer service, they're all here in the US and I believe most of their team is actually in Texas. So I recommend that you guys check out Patriot Mobile if you're interested. You can go to patriotmobile.com forward slash scholar, or you can call 972 Patriot. And if you use the code scholar, you can get a free activation fee. So again, really excited about this sponsor, a really cool company. They have the same values as us. And if you guys are interested, again, check out those links. As I mentioned in the intro in this video, I have an important update in the ATF pistol brace cases. The ATF is now currently pushing for the Fifth Circuit to overrule multiple lower court decisions which block the enforcement of their rule. The ATF now argues that all the lower courts either got the analysis completely wrong or that the lower courts issued injunctions and granted relief beyond what those lower courts could actually do, that it was beyond those lower courts' authority. The ATF has now called for oral arguments in all the consolidated cases and they seek a reversal of all the limited injunctions, but also the nationwide injunction that's currently in place against the pistol brace rule. You may recall that the ATF recently decided to roll the dice and appeal all the pistol brace cases up to the Fifth Circuit. Those appeals include the Mock v. Garland FBC case, the Brito v. Garland case, which is the one that issued the nationwide injunction against the brace rule. Then you also have the SAF case, the NAGR case, the GOA case, and then also the Texas gun rights lawsuit. Although the ATF has already lost once in the Fifth Circuit in the Mock v. Garland case, the ATF has decided that the lesser of evils to them is essentially to appeal up to the Fifth Circuit and hope that they will get some sort of relief from the Fifth Circuit or at least get limits on the type of relief that was issued down below. The circuit has consolidated review of all these cases and the ATF has now argued that all these cases should be ruled in their favor. The ATF argues that despite what the Fifth Circuit said originally in the mock case, the lower courts were wrong in following up on that ruling and using that ruling to issue decisions in all these other cases. Now, if you're not aware, recently in the Brito versus ATF case, the lower court judge, Judge Matthew Kaczmarek, issued a preliminary injunction which blocked the pistol brace rule in its entirety, and that case is proceeding forward, but currently in place, there is a nationwide injunction on the brace rule, and that is the one that's currently protecting people at large across the United States. This decision by Judge Kaczmarek springboarded off of a recent decision by a different judge, Judge Reed O'Connor, in the Mock v. Garland case, and that is the FBC pistol brace case. However, in the Brito case, the judge went the extra mile and granted the request for an injunction against the entire brace rule. So these injunctions simply block the enforcement of the brace rule until the Brito case and some of these other cases are fully decided on the merits. The ATF now argues in their appeal that the lower courts in the cases like Brito were incorrect to use the prior mock decision to show that there was a likelihood of success on the merits. The ATF also argues that the nationwide injunction is overbroad and therefore the Fifth Circuit should reverse that and strike it down and then send the case back down to the lower court for a redecision on what type of relief should be granted. In their recent brief, the ATF argues that three of the four pistol brace cases in those decisions correctly limited relief to just the named plaintiffs but then they also should have not extended the protections to the named organizations and then also the membership. So there they're referencing, you know, FBC, SAF, GOA, and others that got protections, not just for the individual named plaintiffs, but also for their organizations and then all the organization members. The ETF argues that the Brito District Court erred in relying on mock. Plaintiffs did not include any logical outgrowth claim in their complaint or in their motion for preliminary injunction. To the contrary, they expressly waived any such claim even after this court's decision in mock. 
the district court's award of relief on the ground thus violates the fundamental principles that courts narrowly decide any questions presented by the parties. Not only does the ATF argue that the Brito decision was incorrect because it relied on mock, but they also argue that the universal stay that was you know, granted based on that decision was too broad, must be struck down, and then redecided. The ATF then goes on to argue that even if the likelihood of success on the merits was present, they believe none of the parties can show that the pistol brace rule creates an irreparable harm on the plaintiffs to justify this type of lawsuit, that this lawsuit is improper. The ATF essentially argues first that having to pay an NFA tax and go through the process is not an irreparable injury or not an injury in fact. They tried to kind of wiggle around this in this injury claim by saying that, well, we waived the NFA tax stamp requirement. You didn't have to do this for a period of time and therefore there can be no claim of injury. They also say the fact that you decided to not you know, use the grace period or you don't wanna pay the NFA tax and maybe commit a crime, well, that's not enough to you know, meet this type of injury that is needed. And finally, the ATF argues that the allegation that there is a second amendment violation that justifies this lawsuit is not enough to prove an irreparable harm. The ATF believes that these firearms configurations are in fact short-barreled rifles and that they are dangerous and unusual weapons. And since they are dangerous and unusual weapons, they fall outside the protection of the text of the Second Amendment. Therefore, they claim that this rule is valid and does not infringe on two-way rights. They then go on to make a pretty drastic argument. They claim that the common use and ownership of braces and braced pistols does not change this analysis at all. The ATF claims that it's simply a common use of illegal firearms. They state that if those braces have been used to make short-barreled rifles, that have not been registered, possession of those weapons is unlawful. A decade of widespread violation of the NFA cannot create a constitutional right. In any event, even counted on plaintiff's terms, the number of short-barreled rifles remain well below the relevant benchmarks. So here what they're saying is that these types of braced pistols are not in common use. They claim that it's just simply a violation of the NFA. You know, even if you're in possession of these and maybe widespread possession is currently there and maybe there's, you know, common use, but they're saying that common use cannot be met because it's simply just possession of an illegal item and that, you know, possession of illegal item in large numbers does not mean common use. Now, also important in their brief is the fact that the ATF once again tries to make this whole analysis dangerous or unusual instead of dangerous and unusual. This is something that happens all the time and the ATF is trying to do it once again in this lawsuit. The ATF argues that Congress already identified these weapons as inherently dangerous through this whole NFA process in the NFA language, and some states have even taken the same position when it comes to braced pistols. In many ways, this type of argument by the ATF is very circular. Instead of doing the whole historical analysis and the analysis required under Bruin, they're just saying, well, these are dangerous items. They simply say, well, Congress, uh, the states have restricted SBRs. They believe SBRs are dangerous and unusual items. The ATF now says braced pistols are dangerous and unusual items or they're NFA items or they're SBRs. And therefore they're outside the protection of the second amendment because they're NFA items, they're dangerous and unusual, and therefore we can do whatever we want to them. Now, the most concerning thing, again, that the ATF is trying to do in this appeal is the fact that they are trying to remove the nationwide injunction that was issued in the Berto case. The ATF is also asking that the Fifth Circuit remove the current protections that are in favor of the two organizations and their memberships. So this is an important battle that's going on right now in the Fifth Circuit. Or arguments will likely be set. The ATF wants or arguments in all these consolidated cases. I know the two orgs also want to argue this in front of the Fifth Circuit. You know, I do believe we have a very strong and winning position in this case. You know, the question really right now is what is going to happen as far as maybe the Fifth Circuit restricting the whole membership protections, maybe removing the nationwide protections. So that's one of the big questions that's going to be developing in this lawsuit. In all these cases, the question is not really whether or not the Fifth Circuit is going to find this rule invalid, but whether they will believe the membership protections or the nationwide injunction and the nationwide vacature of the rule, whether or not that was proper or not. But as it stands right now, the Brito nationwide protection for the pistol brace issue is currently in place. And then you also still have the membership protections for organizations like FBC, uh, SAF, GOA, and others. So now we will be waiting to see what happens during the oral arguments in the Fifth Circuit. And if anything else changes, if anything else develops, I will let you guys know. So if you like this video, and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe 
And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.